Hello. I um, want to talk about sexuality and aging. <clears throat> it's kind of going to be all over the page. So just kind of hang in there with me. Because this, this particular area doesn't have <clears throat> a lot of research to back it up, so to speak. Um, it's not that there's not research being done. It's just kind of haphazard in a sense because uh, because of a lot of reasons and you can sort of form your own opinion about it um, it could be that there's not that great of an interest in it other than the world of psychology uh, so there's um, probably numerous reasons why nobody really worries too much about this except the people involved in it who are the elderly <laughs> so uh uh, let's let's give them a break here, and we'll talk kind of overview like we always do. I'm not going to go into the deep um, depths of this. Uh, we're all going to get there unless you die young, and at some point you're going to deal with this. But to to give you an in-depth lecture is just not going to be pertinent. So I'm just going to hit highlights. I mostly do anyway, but particularly in this because. This is hard to relate to. If you're, um, if you're younger, then this is not going to have a lot of, a whole lot of meaning for you at the moment. Uh, but as I say, it will later on. So let's begin with this uh, social context, the social context of aging. Uh, I know you've all heard the term ageism, where you almost blame a person for making themselves get old and losing uh, abilities cognitively and physically. They, it's not like you set out to do that if you take, a, it, take stock of your own self right now. Are you sitting around practicing being old? And the answer is no. It's going to happen to you whether you want it to or not, unless, like I said, unless you die young. So we're all going to, you're all going to face it. I'm already there. Uh, welcome to my world. But it's not as bad as you think it is. But things change. Not the same things change for everyone. Uh, we don't, I don't like, nor does research really like to pigeonhole things. We like to look at things in general and then work with the individual implications uh, as side research, so to speak. So we're doing this general overview right now. <clears throat> so beginning. Not everyone ages the same way. Do you all get old and lose faculties? Yes, we all do that. But there are a lot of other things to consider. Health care uh, or the lack thereof. Financial stuff. How financially uh, well off are you? And we could go down that rabbit hole forever. Uh, not being well financially can lead to not being well physically and mentally. So I think maybe you get the picture. Are you a minority? Are you a shifting minority? As in uh, uh, Latin Americans, people who, uh, Latino Americans who um, are now not considered necessarily a minority by way of percentages. How about your social status? How about your job status? So I think you can get the big, the, the big picture here. Uh, failures in those areas or just not being well off in those areas can contribute to not very good overall health. And, and obviously that's going to affect your sexuality. So these, again, are just side issues that play a role in the overall picture. Now, there are some myths that, are, uh, that exist about sexuality in older people. Um, and the fact is that maybe desire lessens a little bit, maybe ability lessens a little bit, but it's still there in many cases. So just because you're old doesn't mean that you lose this human drive. Somebody said somewhere based on research that among the more powerful, uh, instinctual um, drive motivations is uh, sexuality. 
sexual drive. Probably in the beginning for no other reason than procreation because it was necessary. Uh, but it didn't, didn't go away. Sex drive, uh, one of the more powerful things that you uh, that exist in your biological makeup. So, would it? Def- it's biological. Would it diminish? Of course, it would. Does it mean it goes away? Not always. So the the myth is that oh, you get old and then boom, all that sexuality stuff. That's old hat. That doesn't work anymore. Well, not not really. For many, many old people, it's still a viable part of their existence. So um, the, you're dealing in attitudes here. Now, you're not only dealing in attitudes of those who aren't old, but you're dealing in attitudes of those that are. So the disappearance, the seeming disappearance of sexuality is, in fact, a myth. It's still around. Um, sometimes you get this uh, reaction of, ugh, grandma and grandpa still do that? Uh, and that's not their, ugh, that's uh, those who aren't engaged. So a stigma exists. Part of this ageism business, you're old, you can't do stuff anymore. There's a lot of literature, although not a lot of research, a lot of literature that backs up what I'm saying here. The fact that staying active in later life and and far as physical activity is concerned, including your sexual activities, are are not as far-fetched as you think they are. Now, are there challenges? Yeah, sure there are. Uh, When you're 60, can you run as fast as you could when you were 16? No. Can you do the things, etc., physical and mental that you could do? Uh, No, you can't. So the performance falls off, maybe. The other thing to consider is um, disease. And then normal things that happen. We'll go over a couple of those in a minute. Um, Menopause in women. uh, Many changes come from that. Physical, but listen to the psychological thing. When a woman is going through menopause, to, to many women, that's an indication of the onset of older age. And that's psychologically upsetting for some. Uh, and we'll get again, we'll get into that a little more deeply in ju- just a second. In men, um, illnesses because of your age, cardiovascular diseases, for example, where your uh, abilities, physical abilities are diminished. So uh, these are under, under general headings. Now, I want to... Uh, dive into some biological part, and I said we'd talk more about menopause and stuff in a moment. We will. But biological changes related to aging, think a minute what that includes. I've already mentioned many of them. Uh, Performance in general, abilities in general, cognitive and physical. So uh, what what do you call somebody who's, how do you classify somebody so that you begin to understand what they're going through in terms of aging. Well, you do it by what their abilities are or are not. And I know this sounds redundant, but it, it's not. I'm talking here about things like if you're a male or a female, are you in, quote, good shape? Do you exercise? Do you work out? Do you walk? Do you jog? Do you bicycle? Whatever it is that you do. Go to the weight room. A lot of older people are starting to go to the weight room now. They're developing these programs for people uh, to safely move weights around in in a controlled uh, situation. So being in shape, eating healthful diets, so on and so forth, all these things are contributors to the biological side of this. And uh, the psychological end of it is perception. I've talked to guys and women, for that matter, who won't do much physical exercise because their perception of it is incorrect. Oh, that's young people do that. Or, boy, I can't do that anymore. Well, have you tried? No, I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to do it because I know I can't. Do you? You got to try it. So these are just perceptions, all these things tying together to establish your situation as an older person. Now, I do want to mention menopause because it's a major thing. All women know this. Major thing that occurs 
And then there's something that some people haven't heard of. You, you're aware of it, you just haven't heard of it. And it's known as, as perimenopause. It's menopause before menopause. It's the beginnings of it. Um, the transition period from uh, childbearing age and ability to menopause, the perimenopause uh, um, perimenopause occurrence, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Women begin to experience hormonal changes, um, and then that affects them psychologically. And so they begin to think that they're not as desirable anymore, maybe, or that they're not, that they're as now uh, a female who can't produce offspring, that maybe they are lacking in some way, a total psychological thing, totally incorrect, by the way. Well, what are the ramifications of that? Depression, anxiety. Depression is very common in women who are entering into perimenopause and obviously into menopause um, because of what I mentioned a while ago. It's a signal of aging. And um, that's, to some people, the beginning of the end, and it really shouldn't be. So dealing with menopause is uh, probably, from a psychological standpoint and the standpoint of um, performance, and psychotherapy probably not um, very well addressed and certainly not very well understood in some cases. And that leads me to this further overview of the psychological changes, psychological changes and and with aging. Uh, cognition and memory I mentioned. Uh, how about uh, something that's kind of off the wall? Forced retirement. I wasn't ready to retire. What does that do to you? It makes you feel old, right? In some cases. Oh, they're putting me out to pasture because now uh, I'm viewed as not being able to do the job that I used to do. Uh, it may cause financial difficulties for you. Forced retirement especially. Maybe I wasn't prepared. Uh, it causes depression. causes anxiety. I'm worried, am I going to be able to uh, make it financially? Uh, there's another aspect of this that many people don't think about, and that's the loss of the idea that I'm a productive member of this whatever society I live in. Uh, suddenly, I'm not uh, needed anymore, a biggie. Uh, maybe causes loneliness. Maybe you, uh, your work was your where you went uh, because your spouse no longer is around. Talking about death, we're talking about aging. Uh, by the way, it's a very interesting um, subplot here that more and more people in their 50s and 60s are deciding to get divorced. Uh, very odd, especially if it's a long-term marriage. So now you add that into the mixture, and now, yeah, you're set up for depression big time. So what does it do to you? It changes your social network. It changes your outlook toward life in general. It gives you a negative outlook. Uh, again, the big words, depression and anxiety, play a role. Changes in relationships occur. Um, now that I'm in a different circle, I'm not hanging around with young people who are active in, in every way, including what we're talking about. Not active in, in their, uh, as they used to be back when they were much younger and sexual uh, behavior was a big thing for them. So all of these things are contributing factors to the aging aspect and your sexuality. As chapter 17, brush over that. It's, it's a pretty interesting chapter, particularly if you haven't given aging a lot of thought and you thought it's uh, maybe something that, that will never come. Believe me, it will. All right. See you.